Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Eric Rosen. He's got a fantastic story from corporate to intuition and to helping others. Um, and he's got a fantastic story. And I'm happy to uh, welcome Eric to the show. Uh, welcome, Eric. Thanks so much for having me. Super excited to be here today. Yeah. So, you know, I, you have a very interesting story because um, you talked about how you were fed up with the uh, corporate way of uh, doing things and you set out on your own and now you're, you know, successful and helping others. So enlighten us for the audience. Yeah. Um, what I feel has changed since I left the corporate world is there's a little bit more openness to, I think, the shift into conscious leadership. And so part of the struggle that I had was the, the, at least the environments that I was in that was not available. It was, it was very much looking at the bottom line. There really wasn't a lot of weight given to the rest of the footprint. And so there was just this natural drying up of work that happened there and, and a job layoff. And so it prompted me to go on this sort of soul searching mission to sort of find myself what was my calling. Uh, I was definitely feeling wanted to be of service. And so that led me down these rabbit holes first of becoming a certified health coach and then eventually became life coaching. But then I had a spiritual awakening at the end of 2017. And so I started to infuse more of the metaphysical approach into my practice as well as my personal day to day life. Yeah, really interesting. And in your bio, which is really interesting, is um, you talked about um, getting, you know, being sick of. Um, politics and just you know you talked about just kind of this cold and personal way this this industrial way and um so you know moving on we'll talk about this um talk about sh shifting from being a high-powered project manager to becoming a uh, intuitive coach and um what is a quantum astrologer which you, you which you describe yeah thank thank you for asking so a couple of things one is the, the quantum astrology piece is there are a lot of great astrologers out there that have kind of come out in the world. Astrology has become more of a popular tool for generating things like self-awareness. Um, it's actually something that you find that's kind of hidden in, in the uh, DISC assessment, that personality assessment. And so when I refer to the quantum piece, it's really uh, not being afraid to intuitively bring in that intuition experience like into the astrology to actually like pull at in intuitive insight things that i can see like looking at someone's astrology and so it's really just a way of not just using the, the strict technical approach of the astrology but being okay with like looking a little bit broader and uh when it came to shifting from the whole project management scene and it was uh very successful at that into being this this intuitive coach the big shift for me was there was a lot of ego tied up into the success metrics of that career uh the big shift for me like becoming an intuitive coach was that i had to really embody what i was saying i had to really be practicing authentically what, I, what i'm preaching about so it's this really cool thing of the role modeling aspect of it where you know, I could have just stayed the same in that project management role and just went out and went hyper achievement on things. But this shift allowed me to not only better myself, be a better role model of my family, but also that sense of leadership and business and how I help my clients. I just had this uh, very enlightening conversation with another guest talking about leadership. And um, one thing that uh, is has been on my mind is this um do you find that leadership is going to be obsolete with AI and now we have, cause now we have, um, cause we had the web and we had social media cloud. Um, and so now Pete and Elon actually put out a tweet the other day saying that jobs are going to be actually, um, optional and basically mm -hmm. people are going to own their means of creating an income. So what, what are your thoughts? Yeah. What I find mm -hmm. really interesting thing about that. Uh, there's a couple of ways I can go with it. Uh, Elon Musk <laughs> admitted that Asperger's. And so like when you go into the metaphysical piece of like what actually is the cause behind Asperger's, there's actually a sense of like <laughs> disconnection. And so very intelligent man. But I think that comment and some of the things with AI, I think the, the challenge is, is like still needing the 
the compassion and empathy piece that I feel is like a new innovation to a part of conscious leadership, right? Like that, you know, we can have, you know, AI and have algorithms make the mathematical decisions, but, you know, we're very complex in the sense of being a human being, you know, of how different we are. Like, you know, we have, we have free will. We feel very deeply. We're, we're much different than any other living thing on the planet in a lot of ways. And so, um, I certainly hope that doesn't happen. I'm <laughs> optimistic you know, that there are just as much as there's been this sort of awakening that you could say with people going, oh, wow, what really is going on in our government? What really is going on in the media and things like this? I think there's also an awakening of the soul, the personal level of craving more, more love, more connection, you know, that like those things can actually be brought into the proverbial boardroom that it doesn't have to be something that is like suppressed and then it's just business only because if we're putting on that sort of suit of armor and going to the battlefield at work who's maybe having trouble when they go home to their families at the end of the day actually taking that suit off and actually being able to drop into empathy and compassion and so that conscious leadership piece looks at like the, the human you know element of it you know and, and it challenges this idea that the feelings are and practical or, or fleeting, but they, they connect to our intuition. They connect to a greater sense of knowing and that, you know, part of the, the brain that just somehow is able to pull information that it didn't have a rational understanding of prior that just like gut instinct, emotions are very connected to that. Cause I, yeah, I was, um, it's really interesting. Cause, um, you know, uh, especially in these days where, uh, people don't trust institutions or leaders and, you know, leaders are thought of as, you know, corrupt or just out for themselves. Um, and then you know, I was talking with uh, another um, good uh, buddy of mine. He's, you know, he's also a business owner. And he was talking about like, just, you know, just kind of a lack of talent, you know, poor quality, where the good ones just go leave. And he was saying, yeah, um, I've switched to AI software as a service, um, you know, in the future when robots are going to be more um, affordable. And that that cut his costs like dramatically, and you know his output, and he doesn't have to deal with these unreliable or quality control issues. So, how does that fit into your paradigm of conscious leadership? Yeah, I, if the intention that we're putting behind the use of AI is is positive and altruistic, I definitely think that there is a positive way for the AI and the human elements like work together. It's where it's not just like you know the doomsday piece where it's like. Um, you know, people don't don't go to work or like how that, that changes everything. I think yeah. though the it's in, I think it's it is a wild, wild west of sorts, right? This is unprecedented <laughs> what we're seeing with AI. And I really think that it really comes down to the integrity of of groups of people and whoever's like leading it to to be trusted as good stewards and like how that is used, that it's like thinking of like the greater whole for some reason i defer to like the old school nikolai tesla thinking right of like just wanting to like give you know an abundance in that way to like really like want to help and then it's not just about oh it's the it's the ai gold rush now right and it's like trying to just make money off this technology and not actually considering you know the implications of like what will happen there so uh, I would be foolish to say that I exactly know how it's going to go or how it fits into that paradigm. I think for me, the conscious leadership piece is just uh, teaching what integrity looks like that way as we as the humans are the ones giving power to AI that we're coming from a conscious leadership place before we put those things in place. Yeah. And um, one one of the questions or discussions about leadership um that I haven't really touched upon is um, this idea of workplace culture and a lot of, um, you know, a lot of workplace cultures, the employees don't trust the leaders. And, um, you know, there's just this, this um, there's this whole, this whole idea that, you know, um, leader, again, there's this negative connotation, you know, of a CEO or a C-suite. So um, what steps can leaders take to shift the culture within the workplace and how can they create an environment where the employees trust you know, have feel that the leaders have their best interests, you know, are looking out for them as opposed to just looking out for themselves. Absolutely. 
Yeah, there's a couple of approaches that, that I personally like to take in these situations. You know, one is exploring the possibility of any money that's set aside in the budget, especially for like a wellness program, or at least talking about bringing that into the next fiscal year of like dedicated workshops, like for that type of interpersonal development, you know, like for that type of like relating. And there's so many different avenues that I like to take and like what happens in those workshops. And I think the other one is that potentially depending on the character of, you know, someone like myself, like in this like coaching consulting role that goes in and is able to be that liaison between management and employee to find out like both sides of the narrative, like both sides of the coin from, from both parties and be the messenger that's able to somehow neutrally augment and communicate like what some of those shifts need to make and then paint the picture of how that's good for the greater whole. That way it's not just coming from any emotionally reactive, like egoic pieces, right? These stories and narratives, right? Where it's like, it's pointing the finger. It's like management isn't doing this. And then management might have their own things too. They might be a little, hopefully more neutral and just be like, it's tough to motivate them or it's tough to retain talent. Hopefully they're not creating stories because that, that, you know, better leadership would not create those type of negative narratives and actually seek solutions. But those are some things that definitely come to mind on how to like approach that, that narrative because it can be true, but it doesn't have to be either. There are solutions. Yeah. I really love this idea where you're talking about intention and, um, ego because you know again that's a lot of the uh corporate culture is you know embellished in these um ideals and values just um kind of me first and you know uh, king of the hill type thing you know talking about because a lot of the audience they want to they're into like work-life balance family balance so how do you balance leadership and family life and how can you effectively balance the demands of leading a business while being a supportive parent and spouse, you know, what strategies do you recommend for maintaining this balance? Yeah, there's a few. Um, I think the first one starts with because of the principles of like approaching it from a conscious leadership standpoint. If that piece bodied, then there's more likelihood that that sense of leadership will also translate to the home life and it will feel more like you know, more compassionate, interpersonal relating, and not just parenting from the sake of needing to just like manage the household because it's like we go to work and then we manage and then we go home and then we manage. And then the other piece too, um, there's there's very specific tools that can be used um, that are sort of similar to astrology. Again, these are just like tools that can be used for awareness, uh, human design and gene keys. And those are really great ones that, uh, parents can actually go in and look for them, their spouse, their children, and actually read up on these these things. It's actually rather uh, easy to figure out once you get started and actually go, oh my gosh, that's why my child, you know, is influenced in this way and does this thing. And then so you don't have to go home, bang your head against the wall going, oh my God, I'm trying to figure this out or you know, family therapy or the, or the self-help books not relating and actually go to a source that actually paints the picture of something specifically unique to the individual. And then it actually gives the information on like what to do with it from there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really love that. And you talk about, um, again, we talked about conscious leadership, becoming a quantum astrologer and, and intuition coach. So I'm just curious, how does astrology play a role in your coaching practice and kind of help under, help the audience understand how these influences can help leaders gain insights into their personal and professional lives? Absolutely. What comes to mind, you know, for the astrology piece, because I, I, I feel like there's a wide range of diversity and how it lands for people. It can feel like a taboo subject. The science community has accepted that the moon affects the high and low tides of the ocean and our bodies are made up of what's like 50 to 80 percent water. And so you ask any you know, ER nurse on a full moon, which in the astrology world deals with our emotions like, hey, what happens on a full moon or, or walk into a Denny's and ask the, the hostess and the servers what happens on a full moon? And they'll, they'll tell you there's a different thing that happens in, in human behavior. So it's like getting past like that first like gateway of accepting, okay, that the 
technology piece that that the cosmos, the sun, the moon, the planets, it's not like compelling us to act a certain way. That would be, you know, a bypass, like someone being like, oh, I act that I act like this because I'm this sign, you know, but looking at it as as an influence, you know, as as an influence is like a jumping off point of like, okay, this is where we're at. Where do we go from here? So for me, it's like pulling up someone's astrology, seeing like what was the orientation of those planets when they were born? How is the current astrology hitting them on their personal level? And then I'm able to like tell them like, okay, this is the cycle I see you going through. Here's some of the challenge points. Um, here's tools and ways to navigate it. And it's, it's really interesting because I can go into a coaching session with someone and use astrology and they, I know nothing about them and I'm able to like pull up this information and then just basically talk about very in very good detail what's going on in their life. And so they walk away with basically a feeling of greater clarity that I've given them uh, somewhere between a roadmap and a compass of how to navigate things. And so then after that, they can choose to figure that out or we can, you know, do more coaching sessions in order to work past any of those uh, challenges that come up along the way for whatever successful endeavor they're searching for. How can people contact you and uh, find you, follow you, reach out to you, um, check out your works, etc.? Yeah, so the best place to reach me is through my website. It's got all my contact info, all my social media links. So it's Astrology by Eric Rosen, Astrology by BY, and then E-R-I-C-R. <laughs> dot com uh that's yeah. that's the best place to find all my stuff yeah and for all the audience let's thank eric for coming on and uh you know talking about this interesting correlation um about leadership and uh coaching and uh be sure to check out his socials give him a like and follow and with that thanks so much for coming on yeah thank you so much for having me